Tim, welcome to Watchbox. We are waking up with watches. As every episode, what you see on the table is for sale. Every single watch, names and references in the description below with prices where applicable, but some of these pieces are not listed on our website. They will be Email to inquire, and they tend to be the special pieces that only feature on the show. We have that email address, tmaso at thewatchbox.com, for your purchase pricing, availability, conditions, and accessories questions about these and any watches you see for sale on the channel. Let's start right out of the gate with something that is special. In so many ways, it defies description. My favorite watch on the table for once is an FP Journ because it's green. This is a legend. The rarely seen, scarcely built, great green FP Journe Tourbillon Souverain, better known as the Jade Tourbillon. 40 millimeters in platinum. The watch is built by FP Journe case, movement, and dial, but I was told when I went to the factory in 2017 that Mr. Journe himself doesn't like to talk about this watch for some reason, and I reasoned out that it's probably because the dial is so darn hard to make. A solid disc of green jade cut, bifurcated, down the middle to create the upper and lower dials. It's then finished by hand to wrap around the individual registers as well as to display a smooth sheen across its surface. Lovely, with an unconventional combination of silvers, blues, rose gold, and of course that green jade dial. It is an absolute breathtaking timepiece. Now it's also part of the Tourbillon Souverain series, which means that it has all the standard features of that family. Starting with the power reserve indicator up at the top of the dial, 42 hours of power reserve. We have a tourbillon with a single-sided tourbillon carriage cock, black polished and continuously rounded, a filigree style wire tourbillon cage inside, black polished likewise, six position adjustment, free sprung with a handmade overcoil hairspring. You can see there are deadbeat seconds down at six o'clock. They will revert to sweep seconds at about 12 hours of power reserve remaining to keep the watch running even as the constant force device, the tourbillon remontoire, moves out of operation. You can actually see the tourbillons Remontoire de Galité, it's a linear spring with a pawl system that distributes one second bursts of energy to the escapement, designed to maintain constant amplitude about the tourbillon for approximately 30 of the 42 hours of reserve. The movement is made of solid 18 karat rose gold bridges and plates, and as you can see, there is abundant satination, beveled edges, black polished screws, and the entire Remontoire assembly is black polished. A lovely flourish on a watch that needs no more as it is already spectacular and immensely wearable at under 10 millimeters thick. It sits flat and flush on the wrist. 48 millimeters from lug to lug means you can actually wear this 40 millimeter case on a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference, which makes it a wonderful option for traditionalists as well as a viable unisex option. And you can see how low it sits on the wrist. I cannot top that watch. I had to start with it because I am partial to green watches, and that is one of the absolute finest. Now jumping into a brand that I think is just chronically underrated, Breguet. I've got three on the table and none of them are sports watches. We're looking back to the year 2005 now and the arrival of the original La Tradition. This is a timepiece that is designed in the tradition of Breguet's pocket watches. And you can see how this 38 millimeter rose gold case does recap the design of Breguet pocket watch. Reference 7027 BR, the case is rose gold, beautifully cold rolled externally to create that coined flank with welded lugs, high-end case manufacture, and all done by Breguet. The dial features a solid gold disc for the primary time, the hours and the minutes, and then that is cut on a rose lathe for traditional hand guilloche and black galvanized, but the disc is hand guilloche on solid gold. There's a barrel that gets pride of place in the center, as it is the focal point of the watch, driving the great wheel, the third wheel, the fourth wheel, the escape wheel, and then the balance. And if you look carefully at the balance, you will see that it is a modern day recessed bolt, aerodynamic balance, and free sprung. The watch, of course, features a unusual combination of overcoil hairspring 
in silicon. It's designed to be comprised from two different pieces to create the three dimensions of the overcoil using silicon. You can also see that there is a parachute shock protection system up top. This is the shock protection system designed by Abraham Louis Breguet for pocket watches, and it's been recreated here in this wristwatch format. Now you'll see that we have the form of a pocket watch with separate individual cocks or half bridges for the entire train right down to the balance itself, which beats away at 21.6. There's a hidden power reserve needle up adjacent to the dial itself, and then a lovely frosted finish across all bridges and plates with mirrored unglage properly rendered on the edge. You can really see it on the edge of the great wheel cock, but it has traditional unglage as you'd expect in a modern wristwatch. When you turn it over, you can see that there is a separate assembly for a case back power reserve indicator that also shows you the underside of the mechanism. More hand finishing and immaculately executed in every regard. This is one of the coolest watches you can buy from one of the most underrated Haute Horlogerie dress watch brands. These deserve to be talked about alongside FP Journe Patek and even Langa. They're that good, that underrated, and that great of value. That said, some folks want complication in their high-end dress watch. And for those, we have options. Starting with the 3337, now this is a reference from the 90s, 35.8 millimeters in yellow gold, the same solid gold dial with rose lathe guilloche, but on a larger scale. Now the dial features a day and date complication with a moon phase. It's designed to evoke the Breguet pocket watch number 3833, which was a repeating complication, and you could see how the dial side perfectly emulates its inspiration. Now you have the same cold rolled coined cases, the same welded lugs with screws and bars, but when you turn the watch over, the caliber 502 has been entirely freehand skeletonized and engraved. Automatic winding based on a Frédéric Piguet P71 three-quarter rotor. This is an ultra-thin tractor caliber designed to drive the complication. Handsome, gilded, gorgeous, baroque, even rococo. It defies description, and you can see that not one square millimeter of this case back has escaped the artisan's burn, as every single surface has been lavishly festooned with banknote scrolling. As good as it gets, a skeletonized and engraved combination of rotor and movement. You'll also note the open barrel for the P71 that helps to thin out the caliber along with the unidirectional winding system. Very slim on the wrist, super compact, comfortable, and classical dress watch fare. At about 36 millimeters, this is excellent for any wrist size. I'm not gonna give a lower wrist size because there really is none. Anyone can wear this watch with panache, and it speaks volumes about your connoisseurship that you don't need a huge high horology watch to make your statement. I love that one. Now we're about to talk about what might be the coolest chronograph on the table, and I've got a CTB and a datagraph. This is the Classique Chronograph 3237BA, yellow gold, 36 millimeters. Again, you have that rose lathe cut solid gold and galvanized silver dial, but what you have on the back is based on the same Lemagne 2310 caliber that created the Omega 321 and the Patek Philippe CH 2770. Also, the same base caliber used to create the Vacheron Constantin 1140 and 1141. Big, slow beating, 18,000 vibration per hour balance, manually wound. You have a lovely Column wheel, lateral clutch chronograph, overcoil hairspring, five position adjustment, as good as it gets in terms of finish. This is the standard of the Valley de Jeu, the town of Les Brassoux, adjacent La Sentier. This is a neighbor of the likes of Audemar Piguet, the likes of Jagère Lecoult, the likes of Philippe Dufour and David Kondo. It's in that tradition of excellence. It has the feel of an independent brand these days as these pre-1995 brigades, and this one is pre-1995 based on the hallmark, are exceptionally rare, low volume pieces, all handmade and hand finished. They deserve to be compared to independents. They are that scarce and that fine. So we're not just talking about JLC and Audemars Piguet. We are talking about the Dufours and the Kondos of the world. 
throw this glorious 36 millimeter yellow gold traditional chronograph on the wrist and you can see it wears handsomely, subtle, low cut, easily sliding underneath any kind of a dress cut or a sleeve. This is as good as it gets and again you're not paying for Patek Philippe 5070. You're not paying for an Haute de Gamme independent. You're getting a Breguet, a watch built artisanally by a brand that will be around forever to service it. So you have none of the questions that come with boutique brands and independents. Throwing it upside down one more time, you could see as I move it through the light, all of the black polished screws, you could see all of the Cote de Genève across the bridges, the satination on the chronograph recentering hammers, the clutch, and the levers, and you could see the mirrored anglage, the anglage, the beveling, the mirrored rounded surface on the edge of every lever and bridge that glows brightly in the light, as good as it gets, hand finished to a fault, and achingly beautiful in every regard. None of those are Breguet Type 20. None of those are Breguet Marine. You get a lot with a traditionally sized yellow or rose gold Breguet dress complication. Now let's talk a little bit about a brand that frequently gets overplayed, especially on the stainless steel side, but it's very rare that we see a stainless steel dress watch from Patek Philippe. And yet for 2019, that's exactly what the Stern family gave us with this reference 5212A, 40 millimeters in stainless steel. It uses a case and lug profile adapted from the oversized 1950s reference 2512-1, which was in one of its iterations, a little bit of an aviator's watch, but regardless, it's the profile of the lugs and the bezel that carry over to this model. On the dial side, you can see the Calatrava weekly calendar, as this watch is formally dubbed, lives up to its name. You have a month indicator that is adjacent to a week of the year indicator up to 52. You have the day indicator and a date, a lovely off-white cream opaline surface with blackened white gold dauphine hands and blackened dart style faceted indices. All of the print, the numerals as well as the letters, all the characters on this dial have been created by a member of the development team, drawn out by hand. That team member's handwriting was then used as the model for all of the numerals and text on the dial. The other thing that's cool about this watch is we get for the first time in a generation an all new center rotor Patek Philippe automatic. So what I'm going to do is wind this watch up so you can see its most intriguing trick. It's not the weekly calendar, no. On the 5212, it is the hacking or stop seconds, a feature of the brand new automatic caliber 26330, SCJSE in this case, a 35 45 hour power reserve, free sprung, six position adjustment, anti magnetic silicon hairspring, hand finished, and guaranteed to run no worse than minus three plus two seconds a day from the factory, thanks to the Patek seal, the six position adjustment, and the silicon hairspring. On the wrist, the watch wears gracefully. It's a thin timepiece, well under nine millimeters thick. It sits flush to the wrist with a lovely curvature to its lugs, such that it wears really nicely for a 40. I would recommend it for smaller wrists down to 13 and a half centimeters because the way this watch sits is almost as though it were 38 or 37 millimeters. Compact, comfortable, low cut, easily sliding under a cuff. This is the latest and the greatest in Calatravas and some have said that it's also a test balloon for styling features that will be used on the next generation of Calatravas. So between the movement, the unprecedented complication and its role in shaping future Patek design, this is likely to be remembered as an historic Patek Philippe watch, not just a great stainless steel Patek Philippe watch. Continue our journey through FP Journe. We're turning back the clock to the early 2000s, to the brass movement era of what is generally called vintage FP Journe with a Series 4 Tourbillon Remontois. Now, those who know the Journe brand realize that his first watch, created under his own name back in 1999, was technically called the Tourbillon Remontois, not the Tourbillon Souverain. There are a number of features that call out the early models, and this watch has many of them, and additional features that recognize it as a fourth series watch. So you know it's a fourth series because the single-sided cock for the Remontoir is flat rather than rounded. The watch uses a set of small screws to fix the dial to the movement. And you can also see that the printing for the power reserve, the numerals, are about the same size as the minutes printed on the time scale. All of these features call this out as a 
fourth series watch. I should also mention that it's platinum and 38 millimeters. The 38 millimeter case itself discontinued. Very few of these were made, far under 450 of the original Tourbillon Raymontoir, if we're not counting the additional 99 ruthenium pieces, which as you can add easily enough, doesn't add substantially to the whole. These were rare watches. With the signature combination of a Tourbillon beating away a 21.6 and a Remontoir de Galate constant force device, which you can see was visually less developed on these early Tourbillon. You could see the linear titanium spring that meets out those one second bursts of energy to the escapement. But you can also see that this caliber 1498, 14 French lean, work began in 1998, that's how it's named. It features the rhodium covered brass bridges and plates that mark this as a pre-mid-2004 F. P. Jour. Now it has another feature that marks its age, and I'm going to point that out right now. That is the stamping on the French Eleanor made case. Eleanor no longer makes the cases for F. P. Jour. so that feature in its own right is discontinued. But you can see 02T. The case was made in 2002, and T, or Tourbillon, is the reference. These early F. P. Jour. Tourbillon Remontoir are exceptional pieces. And again, we're only talking a few hundred of all four series plus the ruthenium made, which means that they're exceptionally scarce. And this is one of the best. With the white gold dial and the platinum case, it's discreet for a tourbillon and exceptionally mature and refined in its aesthetic. If you're thinking about getting into hardcore F.P. Journe collecting, or you just need to finish your hardcore F.P. Journe collecting, a tourbillon remontoir along with a Resonance 1 is absolutely the direction you should be thinking of going. A very cool watch and a really great early example that's minimally, if ever, polished. That's an excellent piece also because those early F.P. Journe dials tend to degrade and that one shows almost no sign of its age, so it's an exceptional survivor. Now, speaking of watches that represent exceptional innovation, F.P. Journ is probably the hottest independent of the moment, but truthfully, the first independent in the modern sense was Alain Silberstein. Back in the mid-1980s, from approximately 1986 to 2012, the architect turned watchmaker created some of the most raffishly unconventional and postmodern watches in the industry. And this is the 40 millimeter titanium, or excuse me, stainless steel, 200 piece limited edition tourbillon volant using a tourbillon, a flying tourbillon caliber made by France Bausch, which later became Technotime. It has a three day power reserve, a flying tourbillon architecture, a date indicator on a sapphire reference ring up at 12 o'clock, and it references the reductionist de style Northern European artistic style known as the style because it was thought to be objective in the early 20th century due to its use of primary colors and simple fundamental geometries. You see that here, but not used with the grim-faced seriousness of the original De Steel artists. This is all about fun, and it's no coincidence that the watch features all manner of Dadaist shapes and arrangements. You can also see that the depth of the dial is second to none, and it features a motto, essentially, to the effect that to have loved or to have lived your dream is to have loved your job. So to have lived your dream is to have loved your job, and that describes Anlas Silberstein, the architect turned watchmaker. Now the watch is also 100 meters water resistant, so it's a real sports watch, and you can see on the reverse side the underlying train and running gear for the movement has been highly customized. This is a caliber that is gorgeous, technically sophisticated, serviceable by watchmakers, familiar with high-end watchmaking, think split-seconds chronographs and perpetual calendars, and easy to wear as its stub lugs are barely barely there. It's even on its original factory vulcanized rubber strap. So as you can see, the fit across the wrist is so narrow, I can recommend it for a 13 centimeter circumference wrist. Although it's not thin, it's also not terribly thick. Gorgeous, handsome, historically important, and lately cool. Alain Silberstein has been a cult brand, and he's coming back in a big way. He's done collaborations with the likes of Louis Arras, Romain Jerome, and of course, MBNF. He's become a designer name, and watch collectors are now on to the importance of his early pieces. Now, jumping back real quick to the world of F.P. Journe, I would be remiss to not give you a glance of a full bracelet Journe, as we often talk about the watches on straps, and that is the conventional look for the brand, but to see the full platinum bracelet on a full platinum Santagraph F, F4 Ferrari, 
That is something else. Jean Taut, fellow Frenchman and compatriot to F.P. Journe, now president of the FIA, formerly general manager of the Ferrari Formula One team, gave F.P. Journe a can of Ferrari's famous Rosa Corsa red paint. Now, this is the Santograph F, which you can see is stripped down in some ways compared to the standard watch, as there are no tachymeter scales to crowd the dials. Black polished steel bezel around the subdials, one one hundredth of a second, spinning one second, twenty seconds, ten minutes, three scales, extraordinary resolution, the Santograph, or one one hundredth of a second, named in honor of its lightning seconds or foudroyant dial. Now the watch, of course, can be used to resolve incredibly small increments of time for a mechanical movement. It's also a ball to reset, and you'll note that there is a luminous depth and luster to the red parts of this dial that have been painted with that original Ferrari can of racing red. The beautiful yellow varnished hands pop against the dial base. The combination of yellow, red, polished silver and black, making this an imposing piece on any wrist, though not a big bully. Now, it is remarkably solid with a full platinum five-link F.P. Journe factory bracelet. The look is sportier than a conventional Santograph. Hell, sportier than any conventional F.P. Journe. It also wears better in hot weather, and if you are active, a bracelet is a good investment as you won't find yourself needing to pay four to five hundred dollars for a factory strap every two or three years. It's also a completely different look, making this much more robust and contemporary as the full bracelet sports watch is the look of today. Now the movement is everything you would expect. 80 hour power reserve, manual wind, one one hundredth of a second foudroyant chronograph. It features 18 karat rose gold bridges and plates and two patents, one for the rocker system that actuates the chronograph and the other for a mechanism by which the chronograph functions are driven off the arbor of the barrel, effectively its center line axle, and the time is driven off the edge of the barrel, the toothed edge. The barrel gets pride of place right in the center of the movement, symbolic of its importance to both functions, but also the fact that both functions draw equally, neither one is subordinated. And of course, being an F.P. Journe watch of traditional architecture, it is very thin in profile and thus easily fitting under a cuff. A very, very special watch. F.P. Journe and Ferrari, that is tough to beat. And what I love is that it's not co-branded. Nowhere does it say Ferrari or Scuderia Ferrari. There are no shields, no logos. That is car watch co-branding done right. Subtle for the insider, for the connoisseur, not for the gawker. Now, speaking of gawkers, everyone knows when you're wearing a Rolex, you're going to get noticed. But not every Rolex is created equal, and not every Rolex is mainstream. Launched in 2012 in precious metal, and then in 2017, principally in steel, the Rolex Sky Dweller is Rolex's most complicated watch, and thus an uncommon sight on the wrists of your office mates. 42 millimeters in stainless steel with a white gold bezel. This is a GMT with a 24-hour second time zone and an annual calendar and I'm going to demonstrate the functions right now. Still three-day power reserve, chronometer certified, and 100 meters water resistant. When you turn the ring command bezel one click counterclockwise and you pull the crown out, now you have the ability to drive the annual calendar forward or backwards and you'll note the little red indicator that corresponds to the month, 12 hours, 12 months, it's sitting up at 12, so that's December. You're looking at December 31st. Now, you're looking at January 1st as the indicator, the red indicator has jumped to the first hour, the first month, and you're looking at the first of the year. Now you turn counterclockwise one more time. Now you can independently index the local hour and you can use that to drive the date. As you can see, there's even one more degree of adjustment. Now I hack the movement, I stop the seconds and everything, two time zones and the date move in sync. Roll the crown all the way back, justified clockwise, screw down the crown and you have set your annual calendar GMT. It need be adjusted only once a year during the jump from February to March. Throw it on the wrist, and I have to say, all things considered, it's a bit of a gentle giant. It's 14 millimeters thick, which is quite reasonable for a thing of this size, and as you can see, it doesn't wear anything like the giant 42 millimeter Explorer 2, and it should never be mentioned in the same breath as the Deep Sea or the Yachtmaster 2. It's a 
larger date just. That's the way to think of this case profile. It sits low enough to fit underneath the cuff, certainly a jacket cuff, and it has that rugged oyster bracelet with the Easy Link quick adjustment built into the clasp, which you can see right on the reverse side. The Easy Link is built right in, and it allows you to take in or take out five millimeters of length. A wonderful system and a wonderful watch. These are some of my favorite Rolex models because they embrace watchmaking and complexity while doing something practical with all that engineering. The caliber 9001 in that watch is Rolex's most sophisticated ever, and it represents an unbreakable user-friendly annual calendar GMT. Sticking with Rolex for a moment, let's talk a bit about Daytonas. Now, for a lot of folks, there are only two versions of the Daytona, black dial, white dial. And for me, the black dial is the one to own. This is a lovely in-house caliber 40 millimeter pre-2016 black double steel. Steel bezel, steel case, 100 meters water resistant, 40 millimeters in diameter, three-day integrated automatic chronometer certified vertical clutch column wheel caliber 4130 inside. This watch that you see right here is a scrambled serial number, so it's one of the later examples. And when you throw it on the wrist, it has that close coupled flat 12 millimeter thick Daytona look. It's different than any of the other Rolex sports watches because its lack of thickness as well as its lack of a date marks it as a distinct style with more of a dress watch ambiance. It looks perfect underneath a tight cuff or with a formal sleeve, but it is still resolutely sporty with the king of complications, the chronograph and the tachymeter bezel. It gets it done in a way that even the no date sub doesn't, a two-way swing, a dress watch or a sports watch of exceptional caliber with an exceptional caliber. I love the Daytona for its associations to motorsports, which is long, deeply rooted, and sincere, but I also love the fact that it's just a great watch and an enduring design. You go back to 1963, and the first Daytona owners buying the 6239 reference would recognize this watch right here as a descendant of their watch, as a Daytona. And that is the benefit of buying a Rolex watch. There is no planned obsolescence. Your model will never be superseded by a better design that completely breaks with the past. It's always an evolution. This, however, was a little bit more of a revolution, one of the few Rolex watches for which I can say Rolex went all out and went for a little bit of the glam market. This is the rarely seen 2014 to present 116576 TBR. As you can see, diamond indices on the dial for the hour markers. You can also see invisible setting for the baguettes set into the bezel. All of this, all of this exceptional in platinum and heavy as hell at almost half a pound. This is a watch that lights or no lights, seen or unseen, speaks to its incredible level of craft excellence and substance on your wrist, eyes closed, you know you're wearing something special. Now I'm gonna throw it on the wrist and just mention that it has the Rolex ice blue or glacier blue dial, which is a handsome compliment to the diamonds. I like to say this one is double ice or ice water. Enough frozen water, enough ice to sink the Titanic inside and out. A watch that wears just as flat and flush as the model we just saw and surprisingly discreet for a man's watch with gems as the all iced look is very cool, monotone, white. And if you're not looking right at it, you're not gonna be aware of the gem setting. This is a very special watch for a very different kind of collector. Someone who has immense confidence. The kind of person who would drive a Hummer H1 or a Lamborghini Aventador. If you're more of a Aston Martin guy, if you're more of a G Jeep guy. This is probably not for you. If you're the kind of guy who looks at a Pagani Huayara and thinks it needs more power, this watch is for you. Whew. The mass of that thing. Oh my God. Now, for those who want a bit more discretion, if you're that guy who would rather roll in an Aston Martin than a Lambo, then this is probably going to be your chronograph. Launched in 2017 for the 20th anniversary of the Royal Oak chronograph, this is the 26331 ST with a blue panda dial. Grand Tapisserie dial, galvanized blue with silvered registers, 41 millimeter case and stainless steel. One of the other changes, in addition to minimizing the constant seconds at six o'clock for 2017, the watch gained shouldered crown guards that look like the original screw down pusher 
shoulders, but you don't actually have to screw them up or down. The chronograph is always accessible. So while they look the same as the previous watch and they retain the same 50 meter water resistance and swimmability, this watch does not have screw downs. So your chronograph is always ready. Throw it on the wrist. It's a substantial watch. The clasp now on these Royal Oak chronographs substantial enough that you feel they could be fit to an offshore. And the bracelet, as handsomely made as ever, taking nine to 11 hours to hand finish along with the case and the bezel, with most of the work, the hand finishing, invested in the bracelet. Inside, a Frédéric Piguet 1185 automatic vertical clutch column wheel integrated five position adjusted hand finished high horology movement also used in the first and second generation Vacheron Overseas Chronograph, a special movement inside a special watch. I mentioned that it's swimmable, and indeed, with a screw-down crown, this is a swimmable Royal Oak compared to the push-down crown Jumbo. So this is a full-service sports watch, automatic loomed stainless steel, sports complication, and swimmable. I wouldn't go diving with it, but you are good to go for a romp in the pool or by the shore. And with that blue galvanized dial, with its high rejection rate in the production process, you don't see as many examples of this model as you do of the black and silver dial equivalents. This one is special. The blue is generally reserved for AP boutiques. Continuing our run through unbelievable timepieces, I think I'm going to save the best for last, but make no mistake, Arnold and Son of La Chaux de Fonds is no mincemeat. And back in 2014, they launched this model, the UTTE, 42 millimeters in rarely seen hallmarked precious metal palladium. This is a palladium watch, 8.5 millimeters thick with ultra short lugs. This is an ultra thin flying tourbillon with a manufacture movement, triple metallic finishing, three different metallic finishes on the dial. Note the tourbillon carriage beating away at 21.6. No upper bridge to obscure it and 14 millimeters in diameter so that it dominates the dial, almost symmetrically sized relative to the dial telling you hours and minutes. Now, when you flip the watch over, caliber 8200 is a masterpiece. You could see it is artisanally finished and rhodium plated, dark rhodium to give it that lovely black gray metallic tint, artisanal Cote de Genève, double solar spiraling on the ratchet wheels of the barrels and mirrored anglage on the edge of all the bridges. That's hand finished mirrored chamfer, not a machined edge. The screw heads are black polished with chamfered slots. All of this made in-house and remarkably for a tourbillon in a thin profile, 90 hours of power reserve. The movement itself only 2.95 millimeters thick, extraordinarily slim. On the wrist, the watch wears as exactly as you would expect. A thin movement, a thin watch, and likewise, flush the wrist with lugs that arc over the edge and allow this beastly beauty to wear on a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters in circumference. A truly special watch that sits flush, sits under a cuff, gives you an unusual complication from a rare indie brand and extraordinary mechanical refinement, craft artisanal finish, a level of I would say connoisseur interest that you don't get with a mainstream brand. All of that right here in the UTTE, the Ultra Thin Flying Tourbillon. Sticking with Arnold and Son for a moment, we have the 44 millimeter CTB, which was another 2014 launch. 44 millimeters in rose gold. This watch is special because it is a chronograph true beat. You have the chronograph seconds hand, and then you have the central running seconds. So on the same dial, on the same axis, you have two different seconds indications. One for the chronograph at eight beats per second, one deadbeat second jumping away at one hertz. So four hertz and one hertz. Again, you have that triple finish on the dial. Also note that the chronograph features a 60 minute sub register rather than the conventional 30. And when you turn the watch over, you can see here too, we have very short lugs. So this 44 wears almost like a 40 or 41 millimeter watch. Turn it all over and you have the 7103 vertical clutch column wheel caliber, Cote Soleil radiating out sun rays from the center of the movement, all of this hand finished. You can see there is a lovely large aperture in the 
winding system bridge that shows you the column wheel so you can see the blued column wheel in action. The pusher feel is among the best I've ever experienced right up there with the likes of the Lanka Datagraph. Now when you wear the watch on the wrist I cannot overemphasize the feeling of quality. As you can see even corners haven't been cut when we look at a component as minor as the crystal. It is box section and cambered rather than flat. More expensive to spec but Arnold and Son as I mentioned not cutting corners even on the details the dial, the case, the movement, all of it graceful, handsomely finished, brilliantly engineered and different. You can see now I've stopped the chronograph seconds hand. This watch gives you a look unlike anything else and it was actually nominated for Time Zone Chronograph of the Year back in 2014, a well-deserved nomination. Now, if you want a sportier chronograph, you've got some options, but one that I'd like to call out is from another independent brand we rarely discuss. We just don't talk much about British watchmaking, but made in London. This is the Bremont Jaguar E-Type chronograph, modeled after the Smith's gauges, featured on the dashboards of 1960s Jaguar E-Types, or XKE sports cars. This is a dial that does a good job of evoking vintage instruments while still telling time in impeccable fashion with a classical panda-style set of silver dial and registers. Now, you can also note there's a simulated red line on the constant second sub-register to evoke the original tachymeters, and the bottom part of the dial is not calibrated, as you would find on a speedometer or a tachometer. The Jaguar logo is featured underneath the Bremont logo, and as you'll note, all of the vertically arrayed Arabic numerals use the same typeface as the original chronograph, or I should say, as the original dashboard instruments. The case is 43 millimeters in stainless steel, and the lugs are separated from the mid case, so it uses their three part case construction designed to make the wearing experience more comfortable and ergonomic. There's a lovely perforated leather that evokes both the Jaguar E type lightweight structure as well as the perforations in the leather of standard Jaguar E type vehicles. Blue with a red contrasting stitch, it is a rich combination. And then on the reverse side, we have a COSC chronometer certified ETA 7750 with customization. As you can see, those drilled spokes on the steering wheel of an E type, the steering wheel recapped in the form of the rotor. 100 meters water resistant, a COSC certified chronometer, a British made watch evoking a British made classic car and one of the truly great ones. This is a handsome modern day chronometer chronograph that looks the business and even if you're not into the car it's hard not to love the watch. I'll throw out one more reference and that is the image of the automotive tire tread on the barrel of the crown. They sweated the details on this one. All right, we're getting into the final round and the best of the best. And we're going to start off with a monstrous chronograph, the chronograph from 1999, launched then at Basel World, the Alanka Unzona Datagraph, 39 millimeters in platinum, through Patek Philippe for a loop, giant date, flyback chronograph complication, black galvanized sterling silver dial, loomed, I should add, with a platinum case and the epic milestone caliber L951 column wheel lateral clutch chronograph. This was the movement that forced Patek Philippe to rethink its assembly quality, finishing quality, and its use of Lemagne base calibers. This watch, debuting one year after the 5070, put the Patek Philippe back in the case. Steel, satin finished, and beveled chronograph components, fully jeweled lateral clutch, black polished column wheel, and that lovely auburn hued set of bridges and plates in German silver, nickel, copper, zinc, with pivot jewels set in golden chiton, held by fired blued screws, blued and black polished screws, both in this watch. An epic timepiece and a milestone watch. If you're going to buy a datagraph, one of the big three of Longa, along with the Zeitwerk and the Longa One, I always recommend getting the original, getting the 39, and getting the platinum with the black dial. Now, moving one step up, we talk about a watch launched in 2014, and that is the Longa One Perpetual Calendar Tourbillon. 40 1.9 millimeters in rose gold. The watch has a perpetual calendar on the dial side and a very complete one with a sterling silver dial and a solid gold moon phase disc. Turn it over and you can see this caliber L82 is both automatic winding and blessed with a tourbillon regulator. Take note, the tourbillon is a hacking tourbillon. 
This watch giving you everything you could want. Fine finish, detailing, a solid gold rotor with a solid platinum mass fixed in place by blued screws. You have everything we just saw on the datagraph, plus the addition of two freehand engraved supporting cocks for the drivetrain to the tourbillon and a diamond capping the underside of the tourbillon. Not a synthetic diamond, the real thing. Throw it on the wrist and this watch is the business. Almost 42 millimeters of red gold, perpetual calendar, East German tourbillon technology on the wrist. This is a watch with an everyday friendly complication in the perpetual calendar, a romantic complication in the moon phase, and of course, a discreet refinement in the tourbillon regulator. That said, I'm more of a white metal guy, and when you combine it with a black dial, you had me. You had me at hello. This, launched in 2011, is the Alango Unzona Zeitwerk Striking Time, which strikes the time on the quarters and the turn of the hour. It jumps hours, tens of minutes, and single digit minutes. It is 40.2 millimeters in white gold with black polished strikers, and you can see the dial side features the black polished gongs. There is a power reserve indicator for 36 hours of manual wind reserve de mosh, and this time bridge structure is actually the front side of the caliber L043 movement. You're gonna watch the jump right now now, as the watch approaches the turn, it preloads the minutes and then it jumps instantaneously. Digital jumping time, and as you can see, a gorgeous movement. It features a Maltese cross stop works atop the barrel to stop the movement when it no longer has enough power to jump the minutes. You can see just how much black polish there is as I move it through the light, as well as engine turn prolage on the base plate, glasuta stripes across the bridges, freehand engraving, yes, also blued screws, polished screws, and a combination of satination circular and satination radial on the train. This also features a remontoire constant force device, so despite the immense power in the mainspring, the balance beating away at 18K always receives the same amount of energy, which is transferred from the barrel through a remontoire double third wheel and hairspring every minute. Throw it on the wrist and it's a big boy. 44.2 means this watch has a substantial presence. Bigger than a standard 42 millimeter Zeitwerk, the white gold with the black dial is, in the opinion of most, the most distinctive and striking combination. Add the bigger case and you've got a true statement watch, but one which appeals to the connoisseur, not necessarily the gawker. After all, if it doesn't say Rolex or Patek Philippe, the gawker's probably not interested. And that goes double when you combine a tourbillon with a fusée and chain. And we're talking about the 2011 100 piece limited edition platinum Richard Longa Tourbillon Pour Le Merit. If you know the lingo from Longa, you know Pour Le Merit indicates the presence of a fusée and chain. 41.9 millimeter platinum case, a Seyfert scale on a lovely darkened sterling silver dial, and you can see there is a tourbillon regulator which again features stop seconds for precision and precise setting, but there's also a unique hidden dial segment that pops out when you need it and then vanishes when you do not. A brilliant and patented innovation that is a wonderful piece of wristwatch theater to enchant your friends. Turn it all over and you can see the movement is Baroque, handsomely skeletonized to show the fusée and chain. You could see the chain with 636 parts capable of supporting two kilograms of mass and yet only one quarter of a millimeter thick. It winds from the barrel to the fusée and then unwinds in the opposite direction, increasing the mechanical advantage of the barrel as the energy in the mainspring winds down to deliver constant force to the escapement. Does this watch have it all? It does. And of course, as with the Longa One Perpetual Calendar Tourbillon, there is one real diamond on the underside of the Tourbillon carriage. It wears substantial, it wears spectacular, it's a dream in any language on any wrist. A Longa Unzona, Richard Longa, Tourbillon pour le mérite. Constant force and constant fascination. Guys, everything you see here is for sale. Names, references, and prices in the description, except where the pieces are not listed on our website. For all inquiries, you're going to want to contact tmaso at thewatchbox.com. It's your purchase and pricing question line from you to me and my hand-picked crew for all of these watches. Thanks so much. Andrew on the camera, Harrison on the switcher. You guys be well, stay healthy, time out, Tim out, and thanks for logging on.